Welcome back to Dwarf Fortress. This is episode 25. We're going to be looking at the Legends mode again today because the siege ended finally after, must have been a year and a half, I think. It was a long, long time anyway. Actually, probably a year, maybe even close to two years, actually. It was certainly a long, long time that we were sort of stuck inside. Anyway, let's just go back through and start a new game in the existing world. Now, I've just got a couple of them here. I've just called this one Daz 25 Start. Uh, so we'll just go into there. This will be where we pick up. The, um, the Legends details and go into Legends mode. Now we're just going to go straight to Paint Daubs. We'll start there and uh, like at the site and then sort of work our way through. There's certainly all sorts of other different things we can do in through here as well. Like if we just go to Sites and just type in Paint Daubs. Uh, where's Paint Daubs? There it is down the very, very bottom there. It's a fortress. It's the only fortress in the list. Um, now, it just goes through the history of Paint Dorbs. Now, where does the where does the siege start? Oh no, it's only been a year, potentially. Okay, I was wrong. Uh, oh no, no, here we go. Untitled was stored in... I don't know what that is. This is a Forgotten Beast parchment scroll. The rollers were made of hornblende. Um, I'm not sure why that was actually stored there. Forgotten Beast Parchment. Uh, now, there's okay, there's more things happening in through here. Where does it start? Captivated by the Dwarves. Written portion because it's a 10 page essay. I'm not sure who this is. The Dwarf Siphon Cloister Race. This is sort of where I, did, I tend to go off on the rails here a little bit when I start to look at things. Let's just go to our era. See, fun. Did he move into paint orbs? Two fifty. Visit paint orbs. Ah, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So he visited us with his with his precious scroll and uh, was struck down by the zombie dwarf Iron Oaks the Russet with a silver mace in paint orbs. <laughs> Don't visit, don't come, don't come visiting. This is um, a she, it's a she, a female dwarf. Actually, let's just, uh, okay, we don't need to do that one. So this, what she lost here was a legendary cat eye bound codex. So she must have been a, um, like a bard. That would be her, uh, her storybook. Now, the elf, there's lots of things visiting. It's not actually showing us the various, um, oh, here we go. Okay, the constructive torches attacked the stable rack of the mahogany irons at Paint Dorps. The, um, the Emerald Dead's warrior Mems Ungro led the attack. And so this is the actual thing. Now, this is interesting. This is not a necromancer that led the attack. That's, that's unusual. So it has been unusual up until this version. I've never seen this before. So Mims Andre was, an, uh, was Emerald Undead's warrior born in 208. She was an unknown parentage, a one-eyed humanoid with a long hanging tail. Its black skin is sleek and smooth. This night creature was the first created by the human necromancer, Fidem Emerald Dead of Tone Sparkle after horrible experiments on the human Mims Ungro in uh, re uh, released polishes in the year 242. So um, so she was born a long time ago, but really only became a um, like a essentially a night creature, uh, at, uh, like in fairly recent times. And we can sort of see through here, she's uh, she led the attack. Uh, so she, they're actually using, I was looking for the necromancer. <laughs> like every time I often I'd go out and think, is a necro where's a necromancer? We can kill him off. But no, it was the demons that were actually uh, leading the undead in this particular attack. And that's really, really different for me. First time I've ever had that actually. So this is a quite an unusual. Even though we didn't look much of, at much of the siege, it is interesting the way that sort of did with them work. Um, so uh, in the early spring, uh, sorry, early autumn of two, two fifty one, Mems fought in the searing onslaught uh, on the, an assault on paint daubs. Uh, Mems struck down the goblin. So uh, Uzbu uh, uh, crossed seducers. Now goblins aren't universally evil. It's their civilizations that sort of turn against you. I mean they are e on the evil side, but you, like this is probably like if we have a look at this one here, it's probably going to be younger son of a few of the other ones. Um, nearly summer uh, joined a, a false friendship. Okay, it looks like there's um, yeah. I'm not sure how they came into being. Anyway, uh, it, this is in early spring of 252. Actually, it was but was struck down uh, with an iron hammer by Mism. 
Um, yeah, there we go. Seducer bearing. So Doom of Towns. I don't know. I don't know what the history is there, but we won't we won't spend too much time with that. We're sort of more interested in what's going on through here with the um, constructive torches and stuff. So that's certainly um, so. The constructive torches was a dwarven group from the Infinite Land. Um, and so in, in the summer of 75, the dwarf necromancer Dodok Rosegild became the captain of the Constructive Torches. And in, uh, in mid-autumn of 84, the Constructive Torches constructed Massive Steel, which is the, um, I've shown you that on the map before. I'll, I'll have a, we'll have another look. This is, the, this is the, the tower that has become so prevalent, so powerful in the forest, the, the same forest that we're actually in. So it's in the same area. Um, Anyway, so massive steel, we can sort of see there was um, in 84, the, the constructive torches constructed massive steel. Uh, they settled in there, th and, and then there's all sorts of different things. Now, if we have a look at massive steel, it may be towards the end here. I don't know if it'll even mention about the, the attack. Corrupt apprentices. No, it's just a, a nasty, nasty place full of all sorts of vile creatures. Anyway, massive steel is is going to be a, probably a nemesis, I would say, for this uh, for this this actual run. Uh, now we've got the constructive. Uh, yeah, so this is actually the, the constructive torches is the group that actually is is running massive steel. Uh, yep, yeah, attack. Yeah. So anyway, we won't worry about that one. The constructive group just does a whole lot of different sorts of things. Now they are they've got all sorts of different. Um, uh, but different people have tried to attack them, and they've attacked other ones as well. So there's been goblins have attacked them. There's been a lot of stuff, and then down near the bottom here, I'm guessing there'll be a an attack from uh, against us. Yeah. So in, in the early autumn of 251. So it is only a year. It's only a year that we were under siege. It seemed like a lot longer. Uh, attacked. The, the, it's funny because we just finished our trap system just as they all left. <laughs> We were sort of basically probably a season too too late to actually test it on them, but it's, we're ready for the next one. Like there will be there will be more. Believe me, there will be more. Um, so um, yeah, so that's that's the, that's it down through there. So we're just having a look at what actually happened through here. And um, yeah, so the construct that uh, searing onslaught. I can't actually show that one as such. Sorry, I'll just go back out. That was um, paint daubs is already back there. Let's go back to paint dorps again. So if we have a bit of a look, so there was in 251, there's a lot of stuff that sort of happens in through here. There will be, all the all the unimportant attacks, uh, like underground and stuff, won't be mentioned. They won't be listed. Um, that's summer. Yeah, that's the autumn. Yeah, so they actually now come in through here. Then we have all these different people visiting paint dorps. Um, yep, visited in the, in the late winter. Now, captivated by the dwarves, habit was stored at paint dwarves. This is not stored. This is uh, they, they were killed. <laughs> so they were uh, they were killed by by the like the zombie dwarf uh, shade saffron. And we can sort of see if we have a look at some of these guys as well. We'll find that most of these end up being killed over time. So if we have a look at their at their so that the the, um, the uh, in late winter of two fifty one, uh, shade saffron stuck down the human uh, cad fond, uh, fondle dumbrel. Uh, with a bismuth bronze hammer in paint daubs, and then same sort of did it same again through here. Shespa all rained with his with his hammer, um, struck down the human uh, par wipe tone with his hammer, and then mortally wounded Tekud uh, Metalist uh, who suffocated in paint daubs. Now that's interesting. I don't know what would have happened there. What would have happened there? Yes, yeah, so somehow suffocated. Must have been um, strangled or something, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what the uh, what that would have been, but there's um, certainly something in through there. And in, in the mid spring of 252, so six months before where we are now, essentially, uh, Shade Saffron was struck down by the human Lula uh, Ivory Sinks with a bronze whip at Paint Dorps. And so th this human would have actually done, and we'd have a look at, we just go straight to the actual area through here. So. Visited paint daubs in the mid spring of 252. Struck down the zombie dwarf Ford Tails with a bronze whip. Struck down the zombie dwarf Shade Saffron. So he got he got two of them, and then was slain by the zombie dwarf Iron Oaks. So that would have been all over him basically, and uh, he would have been overwhelmed by the uh, by the undead. But he did take 
out two of the zombies, must have decapitated them. That's sort of how you've got to then destroy them. If you can't pulp their brains, you've got to uh, you've got to, you've actually got to chop their heads off. So this is why all those bones outside didn't come back to life because we didn't have a necromancer, not because of this, but be, I'm just thinking now, the demon led the attack, which meant that there was no necromancer to actually then make good of the dead. You'd imagine the size of the army that would have been left um, if a necromancer was out there. Like I, was, I was wondering why why aren't these bones coming back to life? And why aren't they, why isn't there some real big weirdness? So we sort of dodged a bullet there in that sense, um, you know, like in, in essence, because um, the bones are where they, where they fell. We just have to bring them all back inside. I'm going to pulp most of those. Um, and I'll be doing that with the, with the, um, the atom smasher that we're sort of uh, building down near the dump zone. And so we'll end up, that's going to get full very, very quickly. And then we'll just have to quickly go and dump things away. Now, I've got two dump zones now in the fortress, and I will have to go down and sort of turn one off and one on uh, just to sort of get things going. So that's and that's fine. We'll sort of just go with that one. Uh, now, yeah, so we've got all of this stuff. Yeah, so that's, anyway, that's uh, ended up being um, suffocated. So Lulish in the end there as well. That's interesting that they've both been suffocated uh, with the actual attacks that do go on. I won't go through all of the different people that were there, but that's his... Um, yeah, it was, a it was a zombie dwarf. We'll have a look at a few of the others as well. So in 250, this is, it, again, paint daubs back and through this side. Um, yeah, so the demons. Now, yeah, the demons were fast. Some of them are really, really fast. If we have a look at... Um, I'm just trying to get a bit of a scan as to which... They all did pretty damn well, actually, when you look at this. So like, this is the... Uh, this is Bembel. Bembel Coloured Hatchet. And so it uh, struck down a few different people and then disappeared. So basically has, um, actually, oh, actually I did, should have checked to see who's actually up down down below. Yeah, so anyway, did and still still fighting with the, the copper short sword. I, would have, I wish I had have also kept track of the last, well, if we have a bit of a look, the, who was the last, last one there? This is all of the attack, late winter of 251. Um... It just goes on and on and on until we end up with the uh, yeah, the visit. This is early spring of 252. This is all of the fights that actually sort of happened in through here. Again, other things were sort of stored. The Leopard of Hustling uh, was a legendary copper battle axe. This is a, this is a copper battle axe. Ilfruff. Yeah, okay. So that's going to be out there somewhere. So this is a, a named... Look, it was it was made 100, 120 years ago in Sturd Channel by the dwarf Dumat strapped paint and um, in the early autumn was claimed by the human now what happened to him okay he's come and grabbed it okay so it looks like other people are coming in and sort of just taking what they can from the uh, from the battlefield I guess we've got to expect that so it looks like that particular one has now gone Leopard of Hustling, so we won't find that. There was a few things like this that um, that were um, that were taken uh, and or hidden, you know, like where we've. There's just so much that went on here, but there was like if we actually go back and have another look at that again, there was a, the um, it was actually picked up a couple of times. So in in the summer of 252, it was claimed by so many different people uh, who came to like all of these people would have been killed. So the goblin. Um, actually, no, it's it's actually it may still male goblin. Oh, it may be claimed from afar, yeah, from afar. Okay, that's different again. That means that they're actually they're, they're claiming ownership. Now, what this does is it, it when we bring it back inside, so it should still be outside. When it comes back outside, all of these different people now have a claim on this piece of equipment meaning that uh, they may come look, looking for it. <laughs> they won't be very happy uh, because we're going to say no. So we could end up, there could be a lot of things going on. Yeah, look at this, um, the leopard of hustling. Maybe we'll let the rhinoceros demon <laughs> have it. <laughs> if he comes calling, we'll let him have it. This is actually like one of the one of the uh, gods or demigods in the game. So the rhinoceros demon, uh, Therumi Bad Curses, the, unho the ungodly lie, uh, has claimed it from afar. So nobody has um, 
Yeah, so in midsummer of 252, the dwarf Dobar uh, plotted to steal uh, under the influence of the elf. Uh, so there's actually some thieves also looking for it. Okay, this becomes quite important in our story, I think. So the Leopard of Hustling is something we definitely want to be looking at. I might have a quick look through and see if there's any other legendary items that were left out here. Actually, who had it? Who had it and brought it here? Um, yeah, so the uh, in the early spring, um, the human... Uh, Umkos d uh, dive taxes. Now we should see him in there. Anyway, let's have a look at this one here. This uh, this one here. This is um, was a rhinoceros demon. He was one of the only ones of his kind. A great eyeless rhinoceros twisted in into humanoid form. It has a bloated body. Its sepia hair is patchy. Beware its poisonous sting. Uh, Thurumi was associated with torture. <clears throat> so it is a demon, an actual demon. Um... Yeah. Okay. So it's it could come it could come calling. It's actually active. Okay. 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 Um, in one twenty eight, Thumi tamed the giant bats to the depth of the under of the of the world. So um, we've gotten beasts. Yeah. So the depth of the underworld. This will be a region, an underground region. Um, we don't need to worry about that one. And it's the last thing it did. Probably the last thing it did was to claim what we actually now own. Yep. <laughs> the very last thing, it's got a heap of notable kills. Um, I hope it doesn't come calling. I mean, I sort of do. Uh, that could be really interesting. I don't know what's going to happen if, if he comes calling. So that's uh, Th Therumi is the, um, <laughs> is the name of that particular one. Uh, yeah, so there's a lot of people wanting this particular, the Leopard of Hustling. I think if he comes, and they'll probably parlay for it, and say we want this particular item and I think we may if he comes I think we'll give it up <laughs> but I'm assuming that they'd come and parlay first before I don't think they would just attack they'll come in with an army and say we want this give it to us let's see what else there is that we can sort of find any other any other um, any other yellows have a, have a, let's have a look at the city a new approach uh, was stored. No one else is claiming a lot of these sorts of things. So just scroll back up again to see if there's any other yellows. Um, because I'm thinking the yellows are what people are wanting. Let's just scroll on back down again. So we've got that one, the Leopard of Hustling. We'll have to look out for that one. And was that the only legendary? No, there's another one. So Matched Chilled was stored in paint daubs. Actually, before we do, sorry, actually, I'll just pause and go back up. Yeah, if we have a look at this one here, um, I think the human Umkos di uh, dive taxes. Uh, yeah, so in the early spring of two hundred and eight, this so we're looking at, at uh, the this was he was killed, was looted from the helpful sanctuary in Stir Channel by Umkos during the second pillaging of Stir Channel, um, and so in the in the early spring he then claims this as his own. So this is the um, this is actually sort of the, the the ongoing history. He then fights in a whole lot of fights. So he becomes sort of like a bit of a hero. Uh, we don't know about these sorts of things. Uh, fought in the battle of the assaulting, uh, battle of the assaulting. Did all sorts of uh, heroic things with this. Uh, what was it again? <laughs> I've forgotten what it actually was. This is a uh, a legendary copper battle axe. And so he's claimed this and become a bit of a hero around the place. He then took it to, to paint daubs and then was promptly struck down by the zombie dwarf Iron Oaks the Russet with a silver mace. And so Iron Oaks did actually kill a lot of people in this particular attack. A lot of people. And so um, was eventually struck down um, by the elf Vakchi Dawn Square with the knowledge of the trees in point... In, what's that? Another codec. Must have been using it as a weapon. <laughs> so probably by that stage, he was probably just completely... Uh, com yeah, he only had... Um, he only had one kill, and it was the actually happened to be this zombie dwarf. By that stage, the zombie dwarf was possibly. If we have a look at the actual zombie dwarf in through here, uh, yeah. So we can sort of see through here where we've got the. He was using a silver mace, 
um, until he ended up getting to the point where he was then going and um, and killing others, but not with the mace anymore. And in the final one, like his final uh, attack, he then killed um, Atha Leaffrost with his iron shield. So he was losing his equipment in these as the attacks went on, as the attacks wore on, and eventually. The elf smacked him over the head with a codex, so that was actually, well, you know, destroyed his brain with a codex, and so that was his, um, that was his little sojourn uh, at this siege of paint daubs. So I'll have to remember this one, Le the leopard of hustling. I will actually probably write that one down after this. All right, the next one we have in the list is match chilled, which, which was uh, so a human shallow esteem luck was struck down by one of the demons uh, that were there with a bronze spear. Um, now, when does he claim that one there? Uh, in 239, so not that long ago, received, uh, Match Child received its name in um, New Oranges from Shalo after defeating the hand. Okay, so he's actually killed a hand of Uthla Getzdez as well uh, with this particular item. Um, Shalo devoured the hand. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What's it? What is this guy? What is he? Human born, fifth son. Why would he devour him? I don't understand that. Um, anyway, um, yeah, um, he, he's an author. Then he goes on a bit of a tour and then ends up at Paint Dorbs and was struck down by uh, a bit of payback, actually. Now, why would he devour that? I don't understand this one. So New Oranges is just going to be an earthen clam the, the earthen clam of the talent of accidents founded uh, New Oranges. This is a forest retreat. Okay, so it's an elvish retreat. Uh, so that's Shalo. Let's have a bit of a look back at uh, Match Shield. So Match Shield was a legendary bronze bow. So um, yeah, in the early spring of 239, was rece received its name in New Oranges from the human Shalo esteem like after defeating the hand. Yeah, okay, so it took it from one of... So it was a, a legendary bronze bow that one of the hands... Like one of the demons, essentially... Brought um, in a in an attack, and um, he then retrieved it. He claimed it, and basically then named it. So it became a a uh, stored like a not a stored thing. It became a, a very sort of special weapon. But it hasn't. It's only got um, it's only got one kill. It's only got the first kill, but nothing else. And so we do have a couple of people now claiming this from afar. Um, that's okay. We'll probably get more and more over time. But this is also one for us to have a look at as well. Okay, so those were the only two like legendary items that we sort of received. There's certainly a lot of these that, that no one really cares much about, just the different tomes or um, codexes that are available. And so the last kill was in through here, the zombie dwarf, uh, even glories, the delightful whisker of pulleys uh, was uh, slain. Like so, we actually had a a uh, like a, a zombie dwarf made the last kill at uh, at paint daubs, mortally wounded. Yeah who bled to death in paint daubs. So again, suffocating, suffocating. So he kills things with uh, with a, an iron spear, but we sort of, he killed, again, a lot of people. A lot of people right from the start of the siege. But these got pretty badly damaged at paint daubs. And that's pretty much the end of the siege. Um, yeah, that's, uh, here we go, human necromancer. Aethus helps, Helpful Safe visited Paint Daubs. Now, you will get some necromancers come, but usually they're up to nefarious. They're coming for the wrong reasons. So if we have a bit of a look. So this was after the siege, by the looks of things, in the early autumn. Yeah, the, it did, the siege ended in the early autumn, but this is sort of like a continuation. So um, we'll have a look and see what Aethus help who this particular character is. Uh, we can see he became a human necromancer born in 148. She was the second eldest daughter, so it's a she of uh, Gavel and Oprah. Um, not the Oprah. <laughs> There's no H on the end. Uh, so in, in 155, the elf uh, Nino Heather Poets and Aethys became childhood friends. She was a human. Yeah, human. Um, became lovers, actually. No, that's someone different. That's Oa. Became an animal caretaker in, in Tree Dreamed. Married o uh, Oba. Um, stopped being an animal, animal caretaker. Settled in Brew Through in uh, 168. So this all happened pretty, pretty, uh, pretty quickly. Became the High Butler of the Neutral Fellowship. Became embezzling funds in 179 uh, as the High Butler. Um, fought in a few different battles and things. Was imprisoned. Um, yeah, so uh, was convicted of embezzlement by the Neutral Fellowship and imprisoned for a term of nine years. 
So during that time, uh, in the in the early summer of 182, so one year into her imprisonment, uh, or six months in actually, um, the human necromancer Emi taught Athos the secrets of life and death. So she became, no, she actually must have escaped. Yeah, she became obsessed with her own mortality. She was imprisoned there, but not for, um, she didn't serve nine years because she then moves to Massive Steel. Again, Massive Steel we're going to see coming up time and time and time again. Uh, in this in this particular history, began apprenticeship under the human necromancer, Emi Chest uh, Chest Nut Relief. Now this is only one eighty. This, this is still a fair time ago. Um, so then the, she then obviously takes to it, starts to sort of teach other bits and pieces. So she is involved at Massive Steel. So what the hell is she doing at our place? Now she does a lot of different things. She's doing horrible experiments. Um, horrible experiments in through here. Yeah, to, 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 okay, to, we saw a lot of Helpful Safe demons. So that is her name, yeah, Helpful Safe. So this is Helpful Safe. This is the Helpful Safe. And we had a lot of them, um, Helpful Safe demons, at the, at the, um, and the, in the siege. So what's going on here? Um, yeah, in the mid autumn of 251, um, Aethus plotted to infiltrate the stable rack in order to steal treasures and prepare a coup under the influence of Sass uh, Poke Dables. Now, po Sass Poke Dables will be another. That's a human. Don't know who that actually is. Plotted to. Um, yeah, so somehow Sass. Yeah, they're sort of. They're, pl they're plotting to steal these sort of. These these bit artifact items. That's really what they're they're all all about. So um, Sass, yeah. So this is um, uh, incorporated under the leadership of Sass. So Sass obviously is in charge of something. I won't go, won't look in too much detail, but this is really quite fascinating. So we've got the. Um, so in the, in, the, in the early autumn, so this is in mid-autumn of 251, even after the siege had started. Actually, no, it started in around that time anyway. So she, she was involved. So Athos, is, uh, we've got to keep track of her as well. She's uh, obviously a big player now in the, in, uh, in the actual, in the, in, not Myrtle Lanterns, in wherever the massive steel. So she's obviously a, a big a big necromancer from ne from there. Now she f in um, in the early autumn, which is what we're in right now, Athos fooled the stable rack into believing she was a temporary she, the mercenary to what recluse boat. This is why uh, it's, this is why the legends are so difficult to access. It's because of exactly this, um, so that you don't immediately go and, and start doing things. Which of course we're going to see if we can do something. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do anything. I think we're just going to have to let her go. But she is um, she's going to be now trying to find out information about our fortress. So if we look for Tohot Recluse Bow, uh, we should hopefully find that particular uh, female um, mercenary in our inn, I would guess. So we'll have a bit of a look for that one as well. Actually, this is really, really interesting. Uh, so the more I delve into these legends, the, you know, the more I love them. Uh, we can sort of see her entities, and we can go through and sort of see that you know, we've sort of followed a bit of her history. She became the High Butler in 168 to 181 before she was then discovered that she was embezzling funds, and then she was made into a prisoner of the Neutral Fellowship. From there, she left there and joined the Constructive Torches, which is the group of necromancers at Massive Steel. Now, it's got down that she's a former member, not a current member, so she's no longer associated with them, uh, the, the, uh, then we she went to the Strifeful the uh, Strifeful Mountains. I wonder what that is. That's a um, a dwarven group. Um, became the chief. Uh, so that, yeah, that's this is in in um, two hundred nine. The Help Safe Demon. So her demon Z Zephon became the chief chi uh, chiefess chief chiefess of the uh, Spiteful Strifeful Mountains. So what are they? Um, Yeah, it's um, like there's uh, zombie dwarves and things. So it's just a small group. I don't know where that actually is. Anyway, that's that's sort of beside the point. We'll just go back to hers again. Uh, she then, she was a former member of that one. She then went to the Tin Brothers. It was a dwarven group from the Infinite Land. And so um, yeah, the new government was called the Tin Brothers. The human necromancer, Aethus Helpsafe, became the captain of the Tin Brothers. Um, yep, so then they've got it was different artifacts were then offered up to them as well. 
So she's more of a thief than anything. Like her, even though she's a necromancer, she's a, a, a necromancer thief. <laughs> so yeah, this is quite fa fa fascinating actually through here. Um, so uh, a fine sneer was offered to the human necromancer. Uh, so I'm guessing that that's still what she would then have. This is a legendary iron cap that she probably still wears. Let's have a look and see. Oh no, it's, um, oh here we go, in the early spring of 250, Plotter to Steel finds the approach the Dwarf Necromancer to handle the, the matter directly or through another party via, yeah okay, so this, this is all, I don't know where she actually, so she obviously has lost that, so she doesn't wear that anymore. Uh, how long ago did she have that, I wonder, have a bit of a look and see. It would have been back in through this era. So a long, long time ago. Then she joined the Innocent Coalition, which was a human group. Now, the group can be all sorts of different sorts of things. Yeah, there's all sorts of different things. Maybe she just joined this particular group to live there. She doesn't seem to sort of have any real history back at that particular location. And then she joined the Mirthful, the Mirthful Gerbils which is where she became a member. And then in 231 till now, she's the lieutenant. So this is her current group. And so the Mirthful Gerbils is a human collection of outcasts from the infinite land. Uh, in 27, the human uh, bush, uh, bush kit uh, tired sieges became the chiefess of the Mirthful Gerbils. So it's, and it's, it looks like a small, yeah. So the Mirthful Gerbils became the primary criminal organization in Frosty Sneaked. Um, yeah, it moved into the decent depths in Frosty Sneaked. So they're sort of they're, they're a um, okay they're a, they're a group in you know in a place called Frosty Sneak which we don't know where that actually is. No idea where that is. It's a town, a human town by the looks of things. And if we have a bit of a look at um, at this one in through here, so um, so they're just doing uh, criminal activities for, at this particular point in time. In uh, in 231, the Weasel of Archers began operating at the direction of the Mirthful Goebbels under the leadership of the human Sass Poke Dabble. So we've seen Sass as well. He's the one who has um, uh, has taken... So he's, he's in control. Now, Sass is the one when we sort of saw under the influence. So Sass has... Yeah, so Athos did well gambling and Frosty sneaked at the Misty Tongues in two, 245, but then uh, is now plotting to infiltrate us under the direction of Sass Poke Dabbles. Now, the siege didn't come from her, but we did see some health safe demons in the siege. So they must have still been left at um, at Massive Steel, at the Tower of Massive Steel. So um, anyway, let's have a look and see. So Sass, yeah, so Sass is in charge. He is a, um, the chieftain from 211 till present. And uh, that's interesting. So, and the faith of matching, that is a human religion. Yep, the human goddess of games. So this is probably like a some sort of um, gambling den <laughs> in that location. So what else have we got in through this side? So this is, um, yeah, so she became essentially the lieutenant um, back in 211 as well. Yeah, so in 211, the human became the, ch the, the chieftain of the Mirthful Goebbels. Uh, yeah, so this is, this is interesting. Okay, there we go, there we go. Yeah, actually became a member in 212 and, um, yeah, became, essentially became their lieutenant. Yeah, so in, in 231, became the lieutenant of the Mirthful Goebbels. So there we are. Mirthful Goebbels. So it must be some sort of like a gambling den in the, at that particular location. Anyway, that's uh, that's the history. I think we'll leave it there. That sort of does go through. Again, there's always stuff to find. Frosty Sneak. It'd be sort of interesting to know where that actually is. But anyway, that's... Um, I'll just go back now to the actual game itself and we'll have a look for a few of those little things that we just had a bit of a, that we saw there. Bugger, my save games actually got corrupted in all of that and I've now lost three months worth of um, worth of saves in through here. So we're way back before I even built the Atom Smasher. We've still got the, uh, the siege is still ongoing. Um, we do have that, that information. I, I could actually start and re resurrect the um, the fortress again, but I don't want to do that. I, I think I'll just stop what I'm doing, get it forward to where we actually were, and then sort of go forward. But let's have a quick look and see if we can actually find these uh, these artifacts. Um, geez, can we actually find it through there? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, the Le Leopard of Hustling. Okay, we do actually have this one. 
it is outside in this little little area on the other side of the river okay so that's that's actually still there so that's interesting all right so we'll just go back and have another look and see if we can find the other one as well no we don't so the bow is not there but the axe is so that's interesting so the the, the bow may still come look i don't know what will actually happen but i'll just keep on playing until we get to sort of where we were last time <laughs> i mean if we, if the siege still goes on beyond that point uh, i will actually then see if we can if we can sort of um, uh, take them out ourselves anyway i'll um, i'll end the session here uh, what a shame what a shame we don't, and this is of course now too too early for uh, Athis to actually then make her appearance. So uh, we've lost, we've got information, but we don't actually have. In fact, if we have a look at the at the list of uh, units, we sort of if we need to see if there were very many of her type. So yeah, help save steam and help saves help saves. This is all stuff that she created, except for the uh, hand of Uthlegets, Uthlegets does. So this is, um, there was one that wasn't one of hers. These were all her, her demons, but not, under, not so much under her control, I don't think. So um, that is interesting, actually. Very, very interesting. If we have a bit of a look and see these things. So these are still outside. Um, yeah, if we have a quick look at the health and then description. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, yeah, Aethys, um, yeah, it was created by the human and necromancer Aethys Helpsafe in Mass of Steel after horrible experiments. So look, the history is still the history, but I will actually just now run it forward. I won't, I won't save this next portion unless something dramatically weird sort of happens that, uh, that we haven't covered. So unfortunately, this puts us back to, God, how far back? Maybe three or four? Um, just looking at where we get the, the ghostly... You've got Vaybok. I don't think I showed that one through there. Vaybok was, um, if I just go back and sort of see how far down we actually are. Yeah, I yeah, only got to two. I think I just ran forward a little bit with some of these things in through here. So anyway, we'll get back there. I'll just try to remember what I did and, uh, and, and, uh, and then fix all these different other things up. So I'll catch you in the next episode and hopefully we'll be similar to where we were last time. Look, I'm just going to finish off a little bit more on this on this episode. Uh, we've got a new development. Like this is the mangled bones of uh, Ukmos Odilutu's Odil uh, skeleton, where he sort of dropped everything, including Minkil Vostaz. And Minkil Vostaz is, of course, the uh, the great axe, the uh, the legendary axe, with uh, around about two thousand seven hundred and fifty. But the thing is, this is the this is the leopard of hustling. Essentially, is is the axe itself. And so I have. I've tried to get <laughs> so that they will actually go and pick it up. Uh, I've sort of I've um, I've made it so that it's actually available for my dwarves to go and pick up, so they can try to bring it inside. But uh, now, are you going to go go and pick it up? Store item in stockpile. I don't know which one it's. Yes, it's, it's it's they're still getting all the bones, you know. Hmm. Trouble is, what we have is during the, over the course of the uh, of the month or so, or the last couple of months, we've had a um, the ranger Udub has revealed the presence of the Leopard of Hustling to the human axeman, Heisteth uh, Til Tilini. Now, this is actually a... Um, this was done out here where they were, they were just talking about different things. And now what's actually happened is we now have a warning. So we have the human swordsman, Ursi uh, Ulthakurkos, <laughs> has, uh, has spotted sneaking around. You will not stand between me and the Leopard of Hustling. So I've got a horrible feeling that uh, he is going to come and grab it. It's just he's on. He's walking across where the river actually is. I've got no way to stop him if he does. So that was just down in here. But let's have a look and see where he goes. Is he going to head that way? Yeah, he's heading that way, of course. Just watch him as he takes it. And goodbye. No, nope, can't do anything with that bard. <laughs> so he's on his way. And has he now got it? Yep, he's now hauling it. So he will now make it off. We won't be able to ca catch him because it's all outside. So unfortunately, we've now lost, well, potentially the legendary bow of Match Child has gone and now the Leopard of Hustling has gone. Uh, it may be something we try to do to take it back off him at some point uh, through our like through, through the interaction with the game. We can actually go and do these missions. If we just go and follow him, we can then sort of follow him off the map, I would guess. I don't think he'll hover around. 
Yeah, but there's nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. So, what a shame. Oh, hang on, he dropped it. He dropped it, he dropped it. He's got all. He's got a human bone crown. He's got. A, he's decked out to the to the teeth. He has actually dropped this one in here. Now we've got somebody else is coming to actually claim it. So that is interesting. Ooh, maybe we do get it. Okay, in that case, let's have a look and see at our tasks. Um. You can have a look at the actual... It could be any of these people, actually. Still running them in stockpile. Let's just go back and sort of see where that one actually was. Well, most of them going off... To, oh, there's still this, um, <laughs> this thing in through here. Um, oh, hang on. This is actually... This is the experiment that went wrong. It's, it's, that's its body. Athel scales. So this is, um, yeah. So anyway, that's. Uh, don't know what they're going to do about that one. But anyway, that one looks like it did actually end up dying. Uh, now, where is that? Where is that? It's up here. Up here. Mingle, where are you? Just watch to see if somebody else comes and gets it. It does. It is listed to be picked up. So this item is tagged as a task and will not be used by other tasks. Now that's of great interest. So yes, but it's sort of been caught red-handed. I'll pause this until we start to see other things and then I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back inside. Yep, so anyway, something is, something is definitely on the, on the way. I'll just pause and then when someone picks it up, I'll, um, I'll go back inside. Uh oh, so Dacosh, uh, Ashelbash, the stone carver, has been found dead. All right, well, I think we're now in a. <laughs> we really should now take this to another episode, I think. So I think we'll leave it here. There's something else going on now uh, that we're going to have to try to get to the bottom of. I think we're going to have a whole other. Uh, series of things we're now going to need to look at fairly seriously. So we've got a lot, lot going on. So we got sort of back to where we were. It's still only late summer, but I've, I've pretty much got everything back there. The siege ended actually early. Uh, so the siege is no longer up through this side. And uh, it's fun actually, now that we know the, the legends of this axe and the, the legends of the actual invasion with the, um, uh, with what's her name, Aethys helps, Helpful Safe and all these different other characters are standing there getting a real flavour for what's going on. We don't know what's happening with the stone carver. We'll find out in the next exciting episode. I'll catch you then.